In this lesson, we're going to set up your shop uh, in your Sprout Studio account. In the last lesson, we walked through setting up your price list and setting up some of the basics in your price list, like the prices themselves. And we walked through a visualizer and how to configure that and play around with that for prints. But in this one, we're gonna go a little bit deeper on that, but then also touch pretty heavily on the shop side so that you can actually uh, configure your shop, both the way that it shows up in your galleries and the way that it shows up in your public pricing guide. So I have my price list section open up here. I'm gonna go ahead and open that. I've done just a little bit of work since our last video, just in tidying some of this up and adding a few other options here. So I've added some more products and I've added some more services. I've turned on digitals and then I've got a few packages that I've added in here. So uh, the first thing that I wanna run through is just highlight that when you go in here, and we talked in the last video about a whole bunch of these options here and in configuring all the prices and the add-ons and so on and so forth, there is the styling tab here. So if you click styling, this sort of like lets you configure how this thing shows up for your client uh, in the shop. So up here, you can have your summary and your description, similar to how prints work. In display, you can upload your own image, you can use the visualizer if you'd like to, you can do a simple display, uh, or you can use Unsplash and just copy the Unsplash ID in here, and it'll show up there on the right-hand side. And then of course, you also have reviews if you wanna add reviews in here. Uh, and again, you just click add review here. You put, uh, this is uh, Jane Smith, and this is my review. And so you could add that there, and you could add as many of these as you'd like. This is Bob Doe, and this is another review. So you can kind of see you know, how that shows up there, and, and those will automatically slide between those. So they're really, really easy to set up. But that is how you set up and configure uh, all of those options there for all of your products and your services. Uh, you can do the same thing for packages. So if I open up my package here, and go into here, you can see down here you've got the Unsplash option here as well. You can upload your image, you can add description, so on and so forth. So that's just important to note that you can do that on an individual basis for all of your products, your services, your prints, your digitals, and your packages. Once you've done that, the next step is to go into edit shop layout. Now by default, your shop is disabled. We don't wanna turn that on by default for anyone. We want that to be an explicit action that you go ahead and turn on. So I'm gonna go ahead and click enable shop. And the default state of your shop is what's called auto mode. And you can see that up here, it says auto layout up here, which basically means that as you add or remove things or rearrange things in your main price list over here, the shop is going to move and adjust and add and remove and rearrange things as you do that. So it's, and as you can see, even right out of the gate, it's still very, very beautiful. It looks really nice. There's a lot of customization that we can get into if we flip over into custom layout modes. So we're gonna do that in just a moment. But the auto layout mode, just know, is kind of like aperture priority mode on your camera. So it's set up by default, it works, it's it's not gonna let you down. It shows off these images, like those are the unsplash images. These are the simple display with an icon. Um, these are also unsplash images. These are all visualizers. So it all just shows up and works really nice by default in auto layout mode. Now let's start kind of getting in and digging in. We're gonna play with auto layout mode here just for a little bit and then we're gonna flip on over into custom layout mode and get really granular with this. So let's uh, maybe click into here. Now what you can basically see here is we have full uh, sections here. So if I you know click on this, I'm editing this section. And what Sprout does by default is it's gonna group all of your prints, all of your products, all of your services, all of your digital files it will then group your gallery only collections and packages and then your booking packages. So if we flip back on over here, you can see that we've got this toggle here. If I actually open up one of my packages, you can see that there's a universal toggle for bookings or for galleries. And the reason that we give that to you is because if you indicate that a package is for bookings only, if you're in auto layout mode, we will not show your booking packages in your galleries because you've already indicated that these are not for galleries, they're only for bookings. So that's what we have that toggle there for. So if I go into the shop layout here, you can see that I've got all of my uh, gallery packages here and then all my booking packages separately down here. So if I click into one of the rows here, maybe we'll click on this row up here, you can see that I can rearrange them so I can just click up or down to move the entire row up or down. Again, if you get into custom layout mode, you can do a lot more drag and dropping and a lot more customization, but in auto mode, you've got to keep them all together. 
So you can move them up or down just like that. And if I actually click onto this and click the edit button, I have a few options. So I have the section styling, which is like the overall section here that I'm working with, or the item options and display, which is like how each of these individually show up in this section. So if I click section styling and design, uh, obviously you can see sort of some of the options that will be available if you're in custom mode, but because you're in auto mode, you cannot change the column layout here because it needs to be an auto so that it can flex up and flex down uh, as you add or remove items. But you can change the design. So we have card layout by default. You have floating if you don't want the sort of card and outlines there, or we have the on top option if you want it to kind of live over top here. I'm gonna go back maybe just to card there. Uh, we have the breathing space here so you can adjust the space between the cards or if you go floating, you can adjust that space between them, give more space, so on and so forth. And then we also have a light theme or a dark theme. I think dark theme looks really, really nice, especially if you go with the on top. I just think that looks so cool like that. So there's a lot of flexibility with how you do this, even though it's in uh, in auto mode, there's still a good deal of flexibility here. Uh, the other option down here is you can turn on or turn off the section header and then a section description. And then if you have them turned on, you can open that up and specify what that text is there. So there's those options there in auto mode, and that's gonna be the case for all of these sections. So I can click edit here, and I can say, what does that look like for there? What's that look like, dark mode? I think it looks pretty cool. So you have a good number of options there in terms of how you configure and customize these uh, when it's in auto mode. Let me try this one here and see what that looks like. We'll go floating, I think it looks pretty cool when you have like the icons like that. Go like that, that looks neat. I love how dark mode looks with these. So there's, again, good number of options there if you want to customize that. So that is how it works here. I'm going to go, I'm going to close that. Actually, I was working up here. Let's go back up here. I'm going to click item options and display. So this is now where you can specify what is displayed for each of the items in this section. So I could turn the name off, for example, or I could turn the price off if you don't want the from, or I could turn the button off and that way they just have to click the entire thing. Uh, and even if I have the button on, I can open it up and say, what do I want the text to be? Uh, start shopping or buy now or learn more, whatever you want to have there. And then of course you can change what kind of button it is. Is it a normal button like this? Is it an alternate style button or is it a simple button, which is just text? And do you want to include the name of the item? And you might want to do that. For example, if you hid the name up here. So a lot of options here, you can add icons. Is there an icon before? Do I want to add an icon after? Uh, which icon do you want to use? So there's a good good number of options here that you can play around with to really customize how this looks. You can also add summary. If you've used, if, again, if you remember, if I go back over here and then back over here in the print section here, if you use any of these ones that we pre-created uh, for you, then we've written some really beautiful summaries and descriptions. So my recommendation, honestly, would be to turn that on, the summary turn it on, because I think that it really just shows off uh, the, the sort of products that you're offering in a really nice and really elegant way. I'm gonna go ahead and just turn buttons back on to normal there. No, I'm gonna go back to alt. There we go. So that's the difference is section styling is basically affecting this entire section, whereas item option and display affects how each individual item will be displayed. And, and again, in here, uh, there is no way to, you know, remove just this item. Uh, this is an auto mode, so everything will automatically show up. And the other option that you have is you can click the header up here and click here and you can actually choose do you want this to be a slider between all the items in your price list or do you want it to be static content in which case you can go full width split left split right light or dark and then you can also customize what that heading is for welcome what the description is and you can actually also add a button there and if you have it in static content, then you can go ahead and upload an image. So if you wanna have no image, you can upload an image here, or you can choose an unsplash image here as well. So you can customize that heading up there to you know look however you want it to look. So if we just go ahead and leave this for now in auto mode, then that is how it looks. And again, I think it looks really beautiful. It looks really nice, it looks really elegant. And now you've got a beautiful shop all set up. What we're gonna do now though, is we're gonna flick this into custom mode. And that way we can get in and we can drag and drop and we can customize this with a little bit more granularity. So I'm gonna go ahead and click custom and we're gonna say, yes, I want to add this into custom mode. And so again, now you have a good deal um, more of flexibility. So uh, the one thing that you may have noticed is that we have this little your items 
tray down here. And if I click that, it shows everything that I have in my price list with a check mark beside it if it's already added into this shop. Uh, and the reason that we have that is because now you can click here and remove items. You can click little X's there. And if I open that up, you can see that that item photo print and canvas gallery wrap have been removed from here. So you can kind of play around here, add things, remove things. What you can also do is take any of these and drag and drop them. So if you want to move that around, you want to move this around. If you want to move this up here into its own section, you can. If you want to add these things together into their own section together, then you can. So there's a lot more flexibility now. If you want to take this and move this up like that, beautiful. Now you can click here and click edit. And maybe you want to give this one the dark mode, give it the summary there. So again, a lot more flexibility now that you're in custom mode. You can drag things around, remove them, add them. You can go up here. You can add the same thing more than once. Maybe you want to highlight something really big up here, but then you know make it smaller as a part of the other options down below. So you have a lot of flexibility. And we've seen some photographers that have just done such beautiful, beautiful work uh, with their shop because of how flexible this is. And again, keep in mind that for each one of these, you can add a uh, summary and description. So if I go into like this, for example, or I guess I got to go into one of these ones. If I go in here, you can add the summary and descriptions. You can have intros and titles and all of these kinds of things. There's a lot of flexibility here. Uh, can potentially be overwhelming, but um, it's it's pretty straightforward to work with and it's pretty easy to drag and drop with. And honestly, the easiest thing is that come in here, play around, have fun, poke around, and then um, what you can always just do is reset it. So if you click auto, um, what it's going to do is just kind of throw out what you had, go back into auto mode, and now it's back to that same state that it was before and then flip back into custom. So if you wanna kind of play around and, and move it around and you're not really sure how it's gonna work, but you wanna play around with it, uh, don't worry, you're not doing any damage. You can always just flip it back into auto and it will uh, just reset itself for you. And then you can go back into custom. And so that is how you configure and set up your shop uh, here in Sprout Studio.